Hello, so today I got something special for you. We all know that the FPS in the Persistent Universe and Star Citizen suck at the moment. It's around 20 for me, sometimes 25. And uh, I got some new information from my friends over at Explore. They put out the tutorial on how to set your graphics card settings to improve the performance in Star Citizen and get more FPS or at least don't get as many FPS drops, have a more stable performance and have your graphic cards driver detect that Star Citizen is actually a game because currently there's no video card driver for Star Citizen implemented yet that's at a later stage in the development, I guess. Every time you install a game, there will be this DirectX thing in the beginning that will install some special DirectX stuff and customize your driver, put in all the settings for you. Yeah, that's not yet implemented. So let me show you how it's done on NVIDIA card. So you go to your NVIDIA control panel, open that up. It takes a while. Okay, so you want to go to 3D settings, manage 3D settings. It's in German on my screen, but I think I got the names right. Then you will go to program settings. And I had already added Squadron 42 slash Star Citizen, but you will have to do that. So you go to add your game. This will take a while. Um, yep, and there we go. You go to search for file and then you go to your PC. For you it's probably in C, but I have a second SSD and I wanted to give it the best performance possible. So I put Star Citizen on a separate SSD so that Star Citizen can have all the in and out writes from this SSD without having to bother with the whole Windows system accessing the drive and stuff. So you go to your, um, let me do it for C because I also have it on C. You go to Programs, Cloud Imperium Games, Star Citizen, uh, Public. And then you need to go to Binary 64. You know, there's also the a launcher. Don't do that. Go to Star Citizen, Public, Binary 64 and select the Star Citizen EXE, not the launcher. That's really important. After that, you want to go through all the settings. Well, the first setting we need to change is the anisotropic filtering. Put that on two times. Star Citizen doesn't currently utilize more than two times. So that's a good setting for us. Then the next setting will be uh, energy saving or energy mode. You can put it on optimal, adaptive or maximum power. Uh, basically what this does, it turns off virtual or physical cores while you're standing still inside your GPU. And we don't want that. So every time you stand still and then you start to move again, you have this little lag that will happen when it turns on the virtual cores get going again so this way it won't do that so you will get less lags the maximum number of the pre-rendered frames you want to put that on two now if you have uh, like an SLI configuration you could also put it on four but if you only have one GPU leave it at two that will be the optimal setting for you okay so the next setting we need to tinker with is the multi-display mixed GPU acceleration we put that on a single display power mode then we move on to multi-frame sample anti-aliasing we put that to on the next one texture filtering anisotropic optimizations we also turn this on and we go to texture filtering negative LOD bias we put this to permit oh. 
Um, the next one is texture filtering quality. We put that on high performance, not quality performance here. This is on try linear optimization. Turn it on. Threat optimization on. So this way it will distribute the load amongst different threads. Uh, vertical sync. We turn that off. We don't need vertical sync. Well, if you get like a line in the center of the screen when you move your head left and right, then you can think about turning this on, but it demands a lot of power, the vertical sync, and it slows it all down, so it's best to turn it off. So keep this one off. And the last thing, maximum pre-rendered virtual reality frames. So if you have a GPU that's lower than the 900 series, you put it on 2. If you have a GPU that's higher than the 900 series, you can put that on 4. So it will render those frames in advance before you actually using them. And that's it. Click accept. So this is part two of my instructional video on how to customize the settings for Star Citizen to achieve a higher frame rate in the game and less frame drops and all the good stuff. So this one is for the AMD Radeon settings panel in Crimson. So you open your AMD settings panel from right clicking the tray icon in the bottom left. As you see I'm on an Nvidia card so I can't show you this but I will use this uh, screenshot picture to walk you through the settings you need to do. So first you need to add your game Star Citizen just the same way as described in the Nvidia portion of this. What you basically do is you go to your game list in the control panel here and you select Star Citizen and then customize all the options in a similar way to the NVIDIA. You go to your profile properties and you make sure that you have selected your Cloud Imperium Game Star Citizen public binary 64 folder and the Star Citizen X index, not the launcher. This is really important. And then you go to your profile graphics settings. The first setting you need to edit is the override application setting. Put that on, not off. Second one, set it to two. If you have more than HD, do two. So there will be a two EQ setting on the anti-aliasing. Put that on two. If you have a higher than HD resolution, then put it on two EQ. Then the next one, leave this at a standard. The, the filtering, also leave it on standard the anti-aliasing method, put that to, if you have an R9 or higher card, put it on super sampling. If your card is lower than an R9, put it on multi sampling. The next one, morphological filtering, leave it at off. Um, anisotropic filtering, turn that on. Texture filtering quality, put it on high. If you want more performance, you can put it on standard, but normally high should be good. Turn surface format optimization on. Wait for vertical refresh. Turn that off. This will slow you down. OpenGL triple buffering off. It's not used anyways. Tessellation mode. Uh, put this on AMD optimized. Frame rate target control. You can disable this setting. Then uh, if you want to, you can mess with overdrive, but I will not get into that. Uh, just a brief notice on the topic so if you have like a very specific card and a very specific motherboard that will give you the unlocked power limiter you can disable the power limiter in your motherboard then you can unlock the power bridges and this will enable you to get to higher frequencies so it's all about the voltage and current draw from the PCI slot if your motherboard supports a high voltage and current draw from the PCI board, 
then you can enable the setting in your motherboard and you will be able to overclock to insane amounts you can get to memory clocks of 1500 up to 2000 and then uh, also to a GPU idle clock of 1000 with uh, way more when you load the GPU I will not show you this setting because it can cause damage and uh, you really need to know what you're doing if you do that that's it your Star Citizen Exit should be detected as a game congratulations I will also put the whole instructions with some additional comments in the description of this video and also the instructions for the Radeon AMD type GPUs which I don't have so you can also optimize your AMD graphics cards for Star Citizen. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you liked it, it would really help me if you left a comment, liked the video or subscribed to my channel. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye bye.